The Red Chamber is once again debating whether Ontario Senator Lynn Bayak should be suspended. This after the Senate's Ethics Committee released details of Bayak's anti-racism training sessions with the Ontario Federation of Indigenous Friendship Centres last fall. Senator Bayak was supposed to attend three days of Indigenous cultural competency training, but the training coordinator wrote to the Senate Ethics Officer to flag some concerns. Among other things, for example, that, quote, Bayak explained that her Métis identity resulted from her family's adoption of an Indigenous child. Senator Bayak released this response today. Métis are a great people, but to be clear, I am not now, never was, and never will be Métis. I have never claimed she goes on to write to be Métis at any time, in any way, to anyone in my life. So, will senators suspend their colleague for a second time? Senator Murray Sinclair is the chair of the Senate Ethics Committee. He joins me now. Hi, Senator. Hi. Thanks very much for coming in. Can I, can I ask you sort of a process question to start off? Absolutely. This is being, the, this, the recommendation from the Ethics Committee, which you chair, is now being debated, is that correct, on the Senate floor? Yeah, it's been filed with the Senate, and so now it's available for debate. Um, I started the debate with the first speech uh, uh, on the day that it was filed, and uh, it'll be available for debate um, until 15 sitting days after the after the uh, date of filing, and Senator Bayak has five days to give her response. So it will be a, a number of weeks before uh, there's a vote. Is that is that correct? Well, 15 sitting days uh, would normally be about five weeks, okay. but because we have non-sitting weeks in so February, March, and April. It'll probably be close to May before we could technically require a vote. We can have a vote any time after she gives her response. If she declines and says that she declines to give a response or if she responds earlier, then the time for vote uh, would advance. I want to ask you about the statement that she released today in a second, but first, why uh, does the committee feel that she should be suspended a second time? Well, our position at the committee was that the onus was on her to... Um, uh, designate a training facility, which she did. She selected the Ontario Federation of Indigenous Friendship Centers as uh, the one that would provide her with the training, and they and and that selection was approved by the Senate Ethics Officer as required by the order of the Senate. And then she went for the training, and then uh, there were difficulties. Uh, the trainers essentially said, and the letter was attached to the report, mm -hmm. essentially said that she uh, was not. Uh, amenable to training in the kind of course that they were providing. So we directed that a more um, stringent uh, set of conditions with regard to training be imposed. And uh, we had considered the possibility of, uh, of expulsion, uh, but uh, my view is that uh, I think every person deserves a second chance, and she's and still... Hasn't she already had, may I interrupt for a second, hasn't she already had a second chance? Uh, well, uh, not under the Senate rules. So she's she's been ordered only once by the Senate to do this, and there is some indication that perhaps the relationship between her and the trainer was not that good. Um, and uh, the point that we concluded was that the onus was still on her to get the training, and she didn't do that. And so she's failed to comply with the condition imposed upon her. And so will she be, uh, is it your view that she should be suspended and then given another chance to embark on these training courses and, and this kind of um, uh, process? Or, or Exactly. Okay. Yep. And so you don't think that she should be um, expelled from the Senate? Not at this time. If she were not to comply again, do you think she should be? Uh, it's for the Senate to decide, of course. Uh, I think we would have to take a look at the situation as it developed and come to a determination as a committee. Her lawyer says anyone who knows Senator Bayak and her polite manner would immediately be suspicious of the accusations that the trainer made. She again came out today and said she never claimed to be Métis. That was one of the things in that, in that report. What do you make of the response so far from Senator Bayak? Uh, well, that's certainly what she said, and uh, uh, one can accept that. I think that... Uh, She's certainly not a Métis person, and um, and she her ability to claim that she was is certainly a, a claim that doesn't face the scrutiny test. So uh, that being said, uh, I think the real issue, though, is uh, whether she has complied with the conditions imposed upon her by the, the chamber. And because she hasn't, uh, our view is that she should be given more stringent conditions to comply with, and if she hasn't, then we'll consider what the next step will be. What's an example of a more stringent condition? Well, we uh, said that the training should be um, 
um, professionally developed, uh, and it should be um, developed strictly around her needs and her background and her circumstances, and that it should include her understanding of her role as a senator and the impact that her comments have had upon the Indigenous community. Have you ever spoken with her about any of that? Uh, other than at the committee, no. Um, I've spoken with her many times, um, but uh, I haven't spoken with her about those conditions, about the report, or about anything to do with the Ethic Committee's uh, decision. Uh, it wouldn't be appropriate to do that, so, so I don't, but uh, I am on speaking terms with her, as she is with other members of the committee, too. Can, can I ask you um, a question from the point of view of someone who isn't in the Senate and someone who, uh, I understand that there's a process to go through. Um, I also, just from uh, you know, a, a regular Canadian looking in and seeing the things that she wrote and the things that have happened since, am uh, somewhat surprised that it takes so long for there to be any sort of consequence, real consequence for her. I, I wonder why someone who can say something as racist as she did is allowed to be in the Senate. And I'm wondering if you think that there is anything to those questions where the process is concerned. Does there need to be a second look at the way in which this has all unfolded moving forward? Well, I think we have to keep in mind that this is the first time that the Senate's ever come face to face with the issue of racism on the part of a senator and, and how to deal with it and what to do about it. I think it's an area that causes some senators a bit of consternation. We get into discussions around uh, Senate privilege as well as free speech and, and all of that. But uh, I think the Senate itself accepted the principle that uh, racism on the part of a senator expressed by a senator within her role as a senator is not acceptable and has to bear some consequences. One of the important things that we took into consideration, um, I think it's fair to say, when deciding to give her a second chance is, is in keeping with the principle of reconciliation as, a, as discussed in the uh, TRC report, and that is that we all have to recognize that we are part and parcel uh, the result of the educational system that we've grown up with. We talk in the TRC report, for example, about the fact that Indigenous kids who were raised in residential schools were told that they were inferior, mm -hmm. that European people coming to Canada were superior, that their languages were irrelevant, that their cultures were irrelevant, that they were dirty, they were heathens, they were pagans. So all of the possible pejoratives that could be mentioned to them were mentioned to them. But in addition to those in residential school who experienced that, those in public schools also experienced that. And not only did it have an impact on the Indigenous kids in public schools, it also had an impact on non-Indigenous kids in public schools. And they were raised to believe as well that Indigenous children were inferior, were heathens, were pagans, were cruel, and were not equal, were inferior. And as a result, uh, uh, both sides, Indigenous and non-Indigenous, have been miseducated about the kind of relationship that they should be having. And she's a victim of that too. I have to leave it there. I'm out of time. Thank you very much, Senator Sinclair. appreciate your time this evening. Thank you. Hi, I'm Vashi Capello's host of Power in Politics. See more of our show by subscribing to the CBC News Channel or click the link for another video.